Welcome to part two of this healing 448 e radio chassis repair. In part one I had a head scratching problem with the two IF transformers. We looked at some puppies while I got my head together and I had my usual battle with capacitor cans. Despite my best efforts the radio eventually was working. This week I make a new dial disc and install a Bluetooth module. Here's the dial assembly here. It has this plastic disc on here with the a station indicator on it. It has a little drive mechanism down here with a rubber insert in there and that grips the little plastic disc and turns it around. Uh, this has gone as hard as a rock so I'll pull this apart and we'll have a look. This is the back of the spindle and it's got one of those awful little bits of bent up wire C clips on it and they are hard to get off. You almost got to bend them off. I think I can see a gap in there. Wow. Okay, there they are there. So it's not a wire one at all, it's a bit of metal. A bit of felt there. So hopefully I can pull that out. It's tight, that's coming out, there it is. Uh, my experience with these is that you push the shaft in to grip that plastic disc or you use the telephone dial if in the middle if you wanted to. So this should come apart somehow. Like that. Okay. Okay, there's a little spring in there. Alright, so I need to make up um, two pieces of rubber to grip that little plastic disc. Um, just thinking about it again, it probably doesn't have two bits of rubber. It probably has one piece of rubber and it grips on the rubber and the brass bit here and the spring pushes on the rubber. Maybe. I've made a little rubber washer here, but there's a problem. Uh, the little plastic disc that uh, the owner had made isn't the right diameter. It's too small and it's also out of round. So over here it's okay, but when you go back where I was before, it just runs off the off the edge there. So I'm going to have to make a new disc. I'm out in the workshop. I've got a piece of acrylic sheet here. It's about one millimeter thick. I've traced a circle around it, a bit bigger than what this is, but I'll just keep away from it so I get the bit bigger diameter. I've drilled a quarter inch hole in the centre. In the end I'll have to open up this quarter inch hole to about an inch. I've practiced on a bit of scrap and it cuts pretty well so that'll be okay. And I thought what I'll do is mount it on the router on the quarter inch hole and just rotate it and try and clean it up that way. It routes pretty good. I tried a bit here and uh, yeah it cleaned up. It's pretty good actually. It didn't crack or anything so that should work. Uh, so I'll cut this out and then set it up in the router. I'm ready to route this out now. I have a big bolt in there that it can pivot on. I've clamped it here and I've put a stop in here so I can undo the stop and slide it up and down. So at the moment it's stopping it there. Uh, this is way out of round. I, I was a little careless cutting it I think. But anyway I'll get there. So I'm going to just run this around like this, move the stop up, push it in a bit further until I get it round. That's about as far as I need to go with that and it should be one millimeter bigger diameter either side or two millimeter total and I reckon that's pretty good. I reckon that's about right. Okay so far so good. I'm going to drill the bigger hole now. This hole saw is pretty worn. Now this telephone dial center has a little pin here. This is a stock pin for the dial. I have to drill a 10mm hole here so I need to be really careful because it's close to the edge here. So I'm going to start with a 4mm. Now I'll open it up to 10mm with one of these step drills. This will be much better than trying to use a twist drill. The twist drill will just shatter this plastic. All 
right, that should be all right. As I said before, this hole here, the large one, isn't big enough for this. The hole saw is slightly smaller than I needed. So I'm just going to open that up. So I'll use an abrasive wheel. This should open it out a bit. All right, I'll try that in there. <laughs> perfect. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful. Okay. I have a little backing plate here that screws onto this Bakelite front here. So I'll mark the four holes. I'll drill those holes now. I'll make them a little bit bigger so that I've got a little bit of adjustment if I need to. I don't want to load the thing in the centre. It's held perfectly central by this little boss in here. All right, I'll drill four four mil holes. All right, that's about it. That'll go up in there. That should center in there like that. That centers there. Put four screws in and that's completed. I've mounted all the hardware, put the disc on. I'll just put the little spindle in here. There we go. All right, let's try it. Okay, let's see if we can see it. Uh, there we go. That's good. That's the perfect size. There's enough room for the spring and giving maximum grip. Yeah, very good. Very happy with that. The next thing to do is refit this dial assembly. Before I do that, I will these um, little felts here I've worn away, so I'll, I'll replace them with something. I can't use the rivets. They've been riveted on. I'm not going to undo the rivets to try and do it again. So I'll just stick a bit of felt across there or something. Uh, I've put all the dial back on and I've put little bits of felt there, like I said, a bit down the bottom as well. I need to move this around so it's fully meshed. And, and I've just done up the screw on the shaft there very lightly. I'll put a bit of tape here and I'll put a pencil mark there. I'll swing it around the other way so the uh, gang is unmeshed. Now I'm just trying to center the dial here at the moment and this will probably go too far. Yeah, it does. So if I put a mark there, I'll hold that gang down with my finger and if I put that halfway between the two marks, it should be about right. And that should be the center. I'll swing this around to 600. I'll put a 600 hertz, uh, sorry, kilohertz signal in, and we should be able to pick it up. Well, hopefully we can. I'll put power on. I have the generator on 600, so that should come through in a second, hopefully. Can't hear anything. Uh, no, it's not there. Uh, a little bit there. Where are you? Wow, way over there. Well, that's not where I wanted it. That's right at the end. What's going on? I didn't think there was an adjustment for the oscillator. I'll check the schematic. I've had a look around. There's no adjustment in the coil of the oscillator, but I believe this is a patter for the oscillator. So I'll move this away from that full stop there. And if I tighten this down, I'll screw it in. Yeah, it should come back. All right, so I'll keep chasing it. There we go. Well, 600s are here somewhere. A long way to go. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty coarse. Okay. There's the 600. That'll do. I'm just using my ears at the moment. I'm not going to put the meter on. So I need to take this around to 1500. So I'll change this to 15. And off we go. And here it comes, and I can see 14, where's 15? Around there. Actually, we'll make it 14. There you go. So I'll change the generator to 14. I can hear something. We're not far away, or it's not... Now oh, there it is. Right, I'll put that back on 14. I think the adjustment for that is this trimmer at the back. That's perfect. So I'll go back to 600 again. Generator on 600. Just gonna sound up a little, whoops. Now 
and it has moved it a little. Okay, this is going to take a while. I'll just get that right. I'll just go back and forth until I get it right. Okay, I got it right. It took a few more times, but I did get it perfectly right. I've got the generator back on 600. I'll just turn it up a little bit and I put the meter on. The next step is to adjust the core inside the antenna coil. I'm going to wind the volume up. I'll put it on this too and I'll mute the volume a bit so you don't get the squeal. So I won't say anything. So I'll put it on two, adjust the core and we'll just get the maximum and that's it. Here we go. Okay, that was pretty much where it should have been anyway, so I didn't adjust that very far. So all I need to do now is put it on 1500 and adjust the aerial trimmer. So around we go, and I will go to 15 to do this one. And you should be able to see the 15 there, shading the camera a bit. Uh, this has got to go on 15. Now I think this is going to be the one here. There it is. That's it. That's all it needs. All right, that's the medium wave done. All right, I'm going to check the short wave. Uh, I've extended that mark through to this. That's 30 meters. It's about the middle, so I'll put it there. I've got the generator set at 30 meters. I've had to put the old valve generator on. All right, we'll see where it is. Ah, it's right there. Right there. That's close enough. Uh, that would have been the adjustment if I was going to adjust it. I'll just trim this one up here, get maximum signal on this one. That looks like it's about it there. I'll do a quick check to make sure this radio works. Um, I've got all the lights off because I couldn't see the screen. There's too much reflection. I, if you can see it, there's my little mark there. It's just a little bit darker. Uh, now, the first radio station is 612, so it's about there. Better turn it up, hadn't I? <laughs> floating bombs is high into the sky. Oh, yeah. Oops, so that's about right. It's a bit hard to see, isn't it? Uh, the next one's down here somewhere. Should be just before 700. Oh, that looks pretty good, so I'm not going to do any more. I'll turn this off. Uh, what I need to do is put a white marker on this plastic dial now. So I'll take the plastic disc off and put a white line across there. Now for the white indicator line, I'm going to use a bit of water slide transfer paper there. This is white. I need to stick it on the inside, so I'm going to be looking at the back of it. I'm not sure how that's going to come out. I've got a bit of tape here as a guide, so I can just put it on there and know where it goes. Here's the original white line. There's mine. It's a little bit thicker, and I made it that way so I could cut it a bit neater. So I'll pop it in some water here and let it soak for about 30 seconds. That's been 30 seconds, and I can see the transfer coming off. All right, so I put it on the uh, sheet, the perspex, and should be able to just line it up with the masking tape. All right, that's pretty close. I'll just play with that for a minute and make sure it's right. I'm pretty happy with that. That seems pretty straight. I'll just turn it over and see what it looks like. Oh, that looks good. That's got a bit of a kink in it. <laughs> All right, I'll fix that, and then uh, that'll be enough for that. As I said before, the original dial indicator had um, numbers around here and they project a graph with a globe behind and a bit of a coloured screen. Now I don't have those made and I can't make them anymore like I used to be able to, um, but I do have this one off another radio, similar idea. The diameter is a little bit um, different. This is a smaller diameter than this one. So what I'm going to do is cut them out and glue them in the right place on the new dial. So I'm going to go around, and there's 4BH there, so if I find 4BH here, there it is, and cut it out, and glue it to the dial there. Uh, I might have to paint behind black or something like that. I'll have to come up with an idea there to um, you know, cover the black bits. So I'm not going to bore you with that. I'll sit here and cut these out, and put them in the right place according to their, where their stations were, and uh, I'll come back when that's done. 
I put all the dial letter and number stickers on and I've just filled in the gaps with more of the black sticker. I did consider putting paint on the back, but I didn't think that's going to work. It's going to rub off. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that'll work. You won't see it once it's in its little frame. So I think that'll be okay. Uh, I'll just put some power on. I have got the speaker in there at the moment, but I can put some power on it. It'll still power the globes. It's on dim bulbs, so it's not going to be very bright. But that's what it'll look like. It'll be in a little frame like that, and it has a coloured glass behind there. It'll be green or something. I've roughly put the pointer where it should be. I'll just run the generator later and align that. Uh, but the next thing I need to do is the speaker wires. They're in very poor condition. I need to replace this speaker wire. As you can see, it's falling apart and it needs a new plug on the end. So I've got a new plug or uh, another plug. So I need to desolder these two wires here. And these other ones that go to the field coil have no connection anywhere. They're straight into the field coil. So I'll have to put a join in there and just join the new wire. Now I've done these a few times, so I'm not going to show you again. I'll come back in a minute and we'll show you what it looks like. I've finished doing that. It's come out very neat. I'll just plug it in and we'll give it a try. I've connected it all up. I've put an aerial on. I'll put on a dim bulb just in case. Uh, see what we got. That's 33 watts. That's about right of 30 watts now. That's dropping. Just turn it up a bit and we'll see if we've got anything. Amongst them was prominent Cambodian American lawyer Thierry Singh, who was sentenced to six years in jail for allegedly trying to help the exiled leader of the opposition return to the country. So we'll try and get a line through. All right, so it's all working. All right, I'll put it on full voltage. I'm pretty happy that it's going to work. Vehicle. If you drain the fuel system and you change the filters and you put a fresh load of fuel in it, away you go. It's not as big a deal as you might think, and it won't... Now that's lined up pretty well exactly in the right place. It could be just a little bit out, so I'll adjust that later. I'll also look up Scotty Kilmer and Stick Field. Now the dial mechanism is working really nice, really nice. So naturally you would use the telephone to do the uh, rough tune. And then, well, then you would fine-tune it with the, uh, the dial there, the uh, knob. Uh, Redeemer prize, third line of betting at $4. And of course, that's useful on shortwave, which we've got shortwave. It we'll get, should get a bit. With all of them from quarantine zones. Mission says the latest one. Cluster infection has waned. Beijing has... Yeah. Yeah. All Asian shortwave stuff here. I don't know if you can get other stuff in the other parts of the world, but uh, everything's Asian. Anyway, working all right. I think the radio's finished. The only thing I have to do now is fit a Bluetooth module. For the Bluetooth, I'm going to use one of these new boards. This was designed by Manuel Caldera. He has a channel. It's called Electronics Old and New, which he's put up there on the board. And it's a Bluetooth power supply with a signal booster. Manuel's very clever with this level of electronics, which I'm not. You can get these boards from a website. Uh, it's a PCB printing website. I bought 10 of these for about $25 delivered, so that wasn't too bad. I got them in about a week or two. Manuel did a video on how to assemble this, and I'll leave a link below this video. So he's very clever and a lovely chap, and uh, drop in and say hello to him. Now this area here is the voltage regulator. There's a little amp there to boost the signal from these Bluetooth boards. These Bluetooth boards, the signal's very low compared to the radio, so uh, he's come up with this idea of boosting it with an amp, and uh, this is the board that's got to go in, and that will get sent through the amp, amplified and sent to the radio to match the radio's volume level. This is the Bluetooth module, but it comes with a generic name, and it's the name on the back here, which is a KCR86B, and so when you try and log into it, it's got the same name. If you've got a number of these boards, they're all the same. Um, but what I did was buy this CSR USB to SPI interface, and this is a CSR chip, and a lot of these Bluetooth modules have the same chip. So you can program it. So I've changed the name from that uh, model number to 
healing radio Bluetooth, I think. So when I go to try and log into the Bluetooth, it should have that new name. I found a couple of videos on how to do this. One of them was an Aussie and he has an Indestructibles as well as the video. And if you have a look, he's put a lot of these different brands of um, board all with the same chip. Uh, so he shows you how to wire it to, to carry out the mod. I'll put all the links in the description then under the show more tab under the video and I'll link everything that I use to do the mod to the chip. So I'll mount the Bluetooth board on here, connect this up and we'll give it a try and see if it's going to work. I've finished assembling the board and I've put the Bluetooth module on. Uh, we'll have a look at this a bit later. I've connected it to the radio with jumper leads and here's the input from the Bluetooth. It's going to the top of the volume pot. Uh, the other end goes to ground and the centre one is the wiper. So I'm going to feed it in there, it'll come out the wiper and be amplified. There's two resistors sticking up here. These are just the output level of the stereo amp. So the idea of the amp is to match the volume of the radio when you switch from Bluetooth to radio. There's always a difference. The Bluetooth's always softer. So the little amp will compensate for that and we can adjust the level by changing the value of these two resistors. So I've got 47K uh, in there at the moment. Uh, the little module, I just tacked an LED on there that's going to go on the case when I get this finished. So I think I can give it a try. I'll put some power on. Oh, there's a little light. That's working. I, I am a bit nervous. The Bluetooth light's flashing slowly. I will see if I can connect to it. So go to Bluetooth. Should do a scan and should shut. There it is there. It's already coming. So I'll try that. It's not doing anything. No, what's going on? Oh. All right, uh, so that should go solid. Pair, and there it goes solid. Okay, let's see if we can play some music. I've got some um, open source music or royalty free. Hey, it works. Uh, Wow. That is amazing. All right, I'll stop that. Uh, what I forgot to mention was this wire here is the signal in from the receiver that goes into the amp. So that normally goes on there. So I took that off and I've connected the Bluetooth input or output into that uh, pot. So when I wire this in properly, I'll have a switch that'll switch between both. They won't both be connected at once. And I think I'll cut this 6.3 supply to the module at the same time. So I'm going to need a switch and it'll switch between Bluetooth and radio. And when you go to Bluetooth, it'll have the Bluetooth powered. Uh, when I go back to radio, it will remove power from the Bluetooth. I'm printing out a case at the moment to put the board in. Um, I need to wire the switch in and wire it into the radio and leave enough length. This can be mounted somewhere on the radio. It's a console radio, plenty of room to mount it. So I've got little lugs on the case to screw it down. So I'm going to do all that now. I'll come back when it's all finished and we'll have a test run. Here's the Bluetooth module. I've fitted it in a case. I was going to print a case. I ended up buying one. I printed a few and they just didn't work properly. Uh, there's the LED for the Bluetooth and there's the switch. I'll make up a decal for that before I give it back. And I've got a double pole, double throw switch in here so it cuts the 6.3 volts and it also transfers the audio from the receiver to the Bluetooth back to the amplifier and the radio. I also ran a cable to the Bluetooth to the radio and the radio is all wired up. So we'll give it a try. I'll put some power on and immediately the Bluetooth is connected to my phone. And have a bit of royalty free music again. I'll switch over to radio. They must have been so frightened. And did you sense that about them at the time, or were they trying to trying to keep that under wraps for your sake? Well, I think the beautiful thing about we'll go back to Bluetooth. Take a few seconds to connect again. There it goes.
So I'm pretty happy with the value of those two resistors. I will solder those in permanently. Now something I noticed while that was playing, there's a bit of scratching in that speaker. I move the speaker over so I can see it. Oh, it's just touching. It's probably got grit in there. They don't seal these as well as they do the modern speakers, so it's probably got a bit of grit behind it. I'll see what I can do. All right, I've cleaned out a lot of dust that was stuck between the um, spider here and the cone. So just in here. So I've cleaned that out, but it's still doing it. I don't want to pull this off. It'll be destroyed. I'd like to keep that. The uh, edges are still stuck down, so I can't lift the whole cone out. I wonder if I just blew some compressed air in there and it would blow air past the core and the voice coil and maybe just clear out any grit that's in there. So I'll just go out and try that. I'm out in the workshop. I'm going to blow a bit of air in one of these holes. I'll cover the other two with my finger. I've got the air on very low. It's only one or two PSI. So it's just going to be a breeze more than anything. I don't want to push that felt in. That's another thing that can go wrong. So I'll see what happens. Didn't blow the felt in. That's good. Okay. I'll just drop the mic down. I'll see if I can hear anything. Can't hear anything. All right, we'll try that. I've got the speaker back in, the radio's on. I've got this set to Bluetooth. The scraping noise seems to be more prevalent when you've got it on some music. So I'll put some more music on and we'll see what it sounds like. That sounds very good. I can't hear any of that scratching anymore. I'm very happy with the radio now. I think it's finished. Uh, this is what I was doing uh, before Manuel came up with this idea. This is a little mono uh, kit that you buy. It was only $10 or something. These are little 240 volts to, I think, 5 volt output. Yeah, 5 volts and little modules. So I was doing much the same as he was doing, uh, but he did it in a much neater package. I was also toying with not using that and using the 6.3 volts. And I'd already bought some of these adapters, these DC to DC adapters, and I was going to use those. And I think it would have probably been okay, but Manuel's solution was much neater than mine, and I think he deserves a medal. Thanks, Manuel. I'll just break into the video here for a second. I said in part one, the gentleman that owns this radio also owned the little Philco Alabama that I did a couple of videos ago. He's come to pick up both radios today, and he's bought the little Alabama case with him. So I've mounted the chassis in the case, and we'll just listen to it and see how it sounds. Brought to you by Choicer Tea Bags in delicious Slim Jims, the biscuit with the thin bit of mint filling. I just can't help myself. These ideas have found their way into her newest book. It's a story of a boy named Benny O. When Benny is 12. Right, and that, that sounds very good in the case. It sounded good without the case, but it uh, sounds even better in the case. A great little radio from New Zealand. They're clever little Kiwis. Now the owner's taken the healing chassis with him, but he sent some photos back today and uh, he's mounted it in the cabinet and this is it on display. It's a Santa experience centre somewhere in Rock Lee and it fits in with a winter Santa fireplace theme. So uh, yeah, it looks good there. It looks really good. They're going to play Christmas carols through it. Anyway, that's how it all worked out and it's back to finishing off the video. So it's time to wrap this video up. I need to put the cover on there. As I said, I'll make a decal for the front. I've put the circuit inside here, glued it onto the cover that goes on top here. This radio took a little longer than I'd hoped and I had trouble with those IF cans, but uh, it's got there in the end and it works very well. So once again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure. I can see it.